So we're here at Furman University, breaking everything down in offensive and defensive possessions. Furman's uh, top two players, Mike Boswell and Jalen Slauson. Slauson was in a lot of foul trouble in the first half, so Boswell was handling a heavy amount of the load. Going to see how that affects his intensity and particularly if that shows up on the offensive or defensive side after a tough first half and moving into the second half here. It's going to be interesting to see. Matt, great to be down here, man. Thanks for thanks for having us. Been working together for what four years now? Yeah, just about. Yeah, With, uh, it's been a while. Yeah, you know, you guys using Connect Hub for that long. It's really awesome to come down here. You guys have made so much progress over the years. Going back to those those early days, what was that? What was that first year like for you using using Connect Hub when you first got the system in and yeah. just starting a new technology here? It was fun. Uh, I mean, it was definitely. Um, probably a, a logistical challenge as with any technology to implement it. Um, but, you know, I'd say that your support, I mean, just the fact that we've been working together for so long, um, you know, I was very grateful to have someone like you on the other end of the phone, uh, email, hey, I'm done with this, setting this up. That made it a lot easier. Uh, you know, year one's all about data collection. Yeah. Uh, just trying to make sure we get good data and we record it in the right way. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's cool, cool to look back on what we collected and then now how our process has been refined and kind of rolling in a good way right now. Yeah, I know the cool thing for me was, I remember back to that first year, seems a long time ago, we were just so focused on data collection, yep. right? Getting the sensor on the guys, collecting some loads, um, really without that much thought about what they meant. Um, it was so cool for us to then, you know, moving into year two, when we were able to look back on year one and say, here's how the loads are coming through in practice, here where you're losing the games, here was kind of your progression throughout the season. When we were able to look back, we were able to see a, a really a story regarding your player load and performance for the season. Yeah. And then it was really exciting for me to see you in year two, um, being able to implement some stuff with the practice schedule and you, you've since built on that. Yeah based on that data collection. So I just, I, I remember fondly how our conver you know, we started, you know, yeah. our conversation went from collecting the data to really analyzing yeah. it and, and you're able to make some differences with that. Yeah, it was cool. I think we just realized how intense the game was and then doing the drill index, looking at our practices and what we can be doing in practice and how those weren't really hitting the game intensities. And so that, that second year for me was, I think that pre-season period where it was all right, let's change it from a lot more volume to more intense movements. Um, because that's what the accelerated load per minute had shown us. So that was really interesting, that, that pre-season, to look at that and kind of plan pre-season based off that. And then questions go to, right, day before game loads. And then game loads themselves are obviously our two guys that have come back for their fifth year. Um, the week of the conference tournament, which is obviously our probably biggest success story with Connexon and how we managed that last year and how we felt the guys were fresh going into it. But yeah, it's definitely cool to look back on the collection and then, oh, okay, now we got this, where can we go with it? And yeah. then all the questions pop up and then you were just great with, hey, let me look into that. What do you think of this graph? And it was just brilliant. You know, there's a lot of roles we have as strength coach, so you've got to make it easier on us to manage the system. And it, and it just kind of is such a such a great process we have right now. You've been a huge part of that. Appreciate it, man. Would you, would you say you will definitely kind of use this data to change some things about your preseason? and your training camp um you know i remember us looking at those loads and yeah. saying well the loads are there like you were saying but the intensity of the game is not yeah. right so you know you practice for two hours yeah. in preseason. sure your load's going to be there but at any point yeah. have you hit your norms for uh you know an offensive or defensive possession in the game you know basketball is about 15 20 second sharp movements key movements right yeah. key possessions yeah. um 
I feel like, you know, thinking back to some of our conversations, you were able to hone in on that a little more, create some drills to, you know, have you have you been seeing the guys you feel hit, you know, drills in practice, little 21 minute yep. scrimmage segments that, that replicate the game? Yeah, and I think that honestly, the best way we've seen high intensity drills is with the four minute game, a two minute game. Yes. Because they've got full core movements, they're doing all the exertions, changing directions, jumps, um, sprints. And so that's been great to tell Coach Richie, hey, look, we've, they're the best times. Like that's the most intense stuff we can do in practice. And do we do it the day before a game so we can start a game better? Because our first half starts Hampton when we want them. So let's let's surprise them with it, four minute game, let's go. Because we know that's going to hit their acceleration load um, the same as a game would. And if you can give that a short burst the day before a game, almost like a shoot round that some schools do the day of a game, that day has been great for us. So you'll, you'll get the guys actually the day before the game and almost like simulate, hey, first four minutes of the game yep. start now, let's go and then try to see if that matches the game. That's something yep. you might do. Yep. Yeah. And it's, and you know, every coach, I think when they look at a, you know, tracking system, it's like, well, they just think we're going to say, whoa, 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 whoa. And it's like, no, like I'm telling you, like we can go hard, you know, especially with that total acceleration load. Mm. And we look at last night, you know, the 1500s. Well, we should probably hit a 1500 or so in October to prepare them for November games in overtime and December, which was something that, again, you were super helpful with kind of showing that. And, sprinkling this in and it was great to be able to tell coach that hey like this is what data scientist recommends this is how i think we can do it in practice we should give them a walk break head up go to the locker room come back out but it makes sense to have a couple of those really big loads towards the end of october in preparation for the scrimmages yeah. and then in preparation for our first games get the work in preseason and yeah. get ready to kind of peak yeah. at the end of the season yeah. i know we had a lot of those a lot of those chats those were those are really interesting i think it's really interesting to see how players physically that what their demand is what 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 they're what's expected of them on the two different sides of the floor um, because at the end of the day the players are going to be put in position to execute and succeed right based on the game plan based on tactical strategy um, and we need them ready to perform at their peak in those short bursts right so seeing yep. what they're being asked to do offense versus defense um, how that oscillation looks like kind of possession by possession. Yep different lineups on the floor, how that's physically affecting players differently, right? Not so we can make changes mm -hmm. to the lineups, but so we can prepare them yep. when they're put in that situation. Um, I think that's the right way to, to approach yeah. the data and that's something, to be, uh, something we're gonna be going through you know, yeah, in the near future. I mean, all that stuff is just great awareness for players and the coaches. So, hey, when you're on the floor with this teammate, mm -hmm. your energy level drops, why is that? Or your energy level rises, why is that? Um, and for the coaches to understand the lineups um, and the different matchups and how the, you know, every coach wants data, they love data. Well, how can we present it in a way that's really simple, but actually they can apply that in a team talk, in a film session. So if we're looking at effort on offense and defense, I mean, you win the game by scoring more. It's really simple. Um, but the more, the better you defend, we say it's like it's an energy giver for offense. So if you just focus on your defense and the effort there, yep. and max out on that, the offense is going to flow. And last night was actually a great example of that. And even looking at the preliminary data you showed me was the defensive effort was higher. It was up there. So it's like brilliant. Yeah. That's what you want. And coach can, you know, coach. just being able to quantify that, yep. it can help buy in players. Say, Absolutely. look, you work hard on defense. Yep. I've got hard yep. quantitative data to back it up. Yep. And look, win the game by 20 something points. Yeah. Like that to me, I mean, it couldn't have gone any better, right? Yeah. It was perfect. So I'm excited to share this data with Coach Richie and hopefully he's going to be as excited as we are about it. Hi, uh, Coach. Thanks for thanks for being here. So, as you know, we've obviously track you know all your games. Matt Matt does great work with the Connect on system and getting the loads and from games and practice. Um, it was great to be down here in person so we could go a little deeper into your particular game against last night. What we saw was. Uh, Pretty much as expected, um, but if anything, showing some kind of impressive high intensity and effort on the defensive side. Um, so here we've got offense in purple and, and defense in gray. So if we look at the overall load per minute, uh, we're a little bit above 20, uh, close to 20.5 for offense and right at 19 for defense. But if we look at the high exertions per minute, which are the individual instances of hard effort for the players, right? Isolated incidents. It was actually very interesting to see in total, there was 295 for defense, 294 for offense. It was interesting to see 
you know, on both ends of the floor, the guys are doing what they need to do in terms of those hard exertions and, you know, getting to the spots at the key moments. Overall movement, a little higher on offense, which is obviously expected just based on movement and offensive sets and you knowing where you're going. One thing really interesting, I, at the meeting to point this out to you, Matt, is you look at these numbers, right? 19 and 28 and a half. We're used to your game's intensity being 14, 15. Yep. And that's because Matt does a great job of grabbing snippets of the game between, you know, TV timeouts, but there's some stoppages involved there. You have all the data you need to be successful and you have it, right? Because you have a standardized method of tracking. But when we start looking across leagues, right? Com comparisons to the next level, all that. Now you understand the actual in-play movement is about what? 33% higher, right? About a third higher. Yeah. So if you're looking at a minute of practice of go, 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 you know, these are the numbers we're talking about. So you've got another basis for comparison now. And so first half starts have been 17, 18, and it's high pace, high pace, and even that is just lower than this. So it's yeah. interesting with how can we hit these numbers in October with certain drills to prepare for the actual live aspect of the game. How about this number on the right? How, how do we get this? So that, so the exertions as a metric is, is there in your system. So for any session, we calculate the number of exertions the guys do and we split them into four categories. Low, medium, high, very high. That's the color on the graph, the red, yep. the orange, the green. So these are reds. These are, yeah, reds plus orange. I, the top two zones added together. And I just, I like this as a complementary tracking metric because there's some correlation with the overall load, but you can get load up there just by consistent, like jogging for lack of a better term, right? But there's a difference between jogging steadily at a moderate speed and, you know, standing still and then max burst, max burst. And we could, we could see individual numbers on this per player? Yep, we can get per player, Which you know, any game. Crazy, it'd be crazy to see just that per player on both sides, right? Like, if yeah. that's possible, like, because then if you got a discrepancy of a kid for whatever reason, it's like, hey, you're really going hard off this, but you're not defense or vice versa. Yeah, I'll shoot, I don't want to take your time now, but I'll shoot that over to you, you know, yeah. today or tomorrow, just, um, yeah, the breakdown exactly. So for the team, the breakdown was very even, which was, which is great to see. It is, it is good to see. Um, it means they're, they're just, you know, pushing as hard. And it means, you know, you, you got to figure your, the opposition's offense, they're doing those high exertions on their end obviously with the ball to get to their spot. To me, it shows like you're matching them to a degree. So this is just every possession um, for Mike in this game. Just purple being offense and and uh, gray being defense. We saw the averages around 1920. Look at how high and low these can get, right? I mean, we're getting up on defense and offense even, you know, a little bit to 30 to 35s on offense. Now that's, that's a seven, 10 second snippet, right? So, um, nothing sustained over a long time, but just gives you a sense like, hey, I need to see that level of burst from these guys at some point, right? That's how, that's how high our movement can actually get. Second point I'd like to make is, you know, if we look at the game, you know, it's pretty, not, you know, second half doesn't look a lot different from the first half, right? Here's a break for halftime. Going up and down, we have slower possessions, faster possessions, totally normal. Um, and he does, you know, I'm not seeing any drop off in the second half, if anything, a slight upward slope. Um, and I think the point, the big takeaway here is at every possession, they have to be ready to play at their maximum value. And so we see him playing at this level throughout the game, which is great. The question is, is he able to handle that exertion as well in the second half as in the first half? Right? Is he executing as well under that, under that level of strain? So I, I think it's a big theme that we see a lot is you can't just look at the numbers and say, oh great, he was a 15 in the first half, 15 in the second half, we're good. Is he sustaining this? Is he feeling good when he's doing this? Um, Cause this is what we want, not even want, this is what we need. This, this is what's gonna happen, right? In, the, in, in late in the second half of games, is it the same as the start? So that, that, that was the big theme for me. And overall, it's pretty, pretty comparable to the first half. Oh, definitely. So you know, you got those those high peaks, um, and obviously the slower part of the, 
the game when he came out in the yeah. 2000s and stuff, but I think it's pleasing to see his effort be sustained in that second half. What we got here is, in every game this season, so this is game by game, so we've got 16 games so far. So every game we've got Mike's intensity, Slaw's intensity, and the team intensity uh, without those guys, the rest of the team without those guys. And what is really cool for me to see is a lot of variation in this first part of the season, right? Got a game here where the two of them are playing a lot faster than the team. Uh, that's kind of the same here. Here they're playing a lot slower than the team. And it just seems to be a little more out of sync. As we move later in the season and we look at your last five games or so, five, six games, but like look at how closely these points are grouped together, right? Everybody in sync. Playing at, playing at the same rate, playing, I mean, very consistently. Um, last night, very much consistently, right? What's the big exception yeah. here? Way big different. exception there. Way different, yeah. holy cow. Yeah. Only That's time the guys have been out of sync in the last five or six games. So this is when they were lower. So that's one, two, three, four. That's the fifth game. Yep. So this is here, yep. So slow, yep. higher effort than this is. Here with Mike yep. Below. Now you're really starting to dial in. So this is that, that was the game actually. This right here. Uh, yep. So would be curious, uh, curious to hear how you think. You know, scoreline wasn't wasn't great, but if you thought the team maybe against a good opponent, it's actually exactly the kind of data point I like to. Because look, there's so much variation with this, right? There's so many other reasons performances are happening. Wow, that's great. This is something we've looked at for a while, but actually you came to me with this idea to look at it with you guys, which I which I was really happy about. Um, never look at intensity or load in a vacuum, right? Um, you know, we'll get people, well, why, was the, why was the intensity low today? Well, there's a lot of reasons. Pace of the game, uh, you know, tactics, doesn't mean the guys aren't ready. And notably, of course, time. So naturally, based on human physiology, the longer you play, the lower you expect your intensity to be. Um, you know, if I run three miles, I might average eight minutes a mile. I was gonna say seven, but those days might have passed. But <laughs> I run 10 miles, right? I'm up at nine, 10. It's just, it's natural, right? So this is roughly, you know, for Mike and Slaw, kind of what we would expect their intensity to be in the overall game, right? The way you measure the data based on how much time they're being tracked for. Right, so they generally get between you know 30 and 70 minutes in of track time, depending on how much they how much they play. That's where the, the content, like the understanding of the game applied with the data gives it the most you know most insight. Really, it says a lot to how we need Same. to play and how we need to operate the the two guys that we are our fifth year guys. To see it here is like kind of okay, that's good. It's just how to objectively know after practice how hard we play as a unit and how hard individuals play. After practice. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's that's probably an element that we haven't incorporated enough that we, I would like to. We know 1415 is what we should be seeing in the four or five minute segments. 1920 with the potential to go up to the 30s on occasion, right, is what we should be seeing on a possession level. Does, that's not every practice, you know, that's that's your guys' purview, but if you are looking to make a reference to the game, that's your reference. That's Thanks for the time, guys. Yeah, yeah appreciate the time. Thank you all for coming. No, I mean, hospitality's been incredible. I mean, yeah. well, you guys just to be welcome, the welcome, so well, it's a great relationship yeah, all the way around. Appreciate the time, coach. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, good to see you. Good. Finish the job. Good.